hello students as a as a chemical engineer it is necessary uh, to have the basic understanding and concept of the environmental engineering as a part of as a part of uh, industrial bag, industrial uh, uh, sector it is uh, it is our need uh, to reduce the to minimize the pollution there are the three different type of the pollution one of them is the air pollution today we are going to discuss uh, the air pollution uh, first of all we will define the what is air pollution then we will classify the different type of the pollutant and it find out the identify the different type of the different sources of the pollutant so first definition so air pollution is defined as the presence of one or the more contaminants so air pollution is a condition in which there is a presence of one or the more contaminants in in the air or in the atmosphere in such a concentration and for such a duration which may cause the injurious deleterious or harmful hazardous effect uh, to the human animal organisms or the plant life or the property that is all living and non living things or which unreasonably interferes with the comfortable uses of air in the atmosphere so there are the causes of air pollution uh, due to the human activity so i have mentioned here the the different processes but the main causes main major causes of the air pollution is the rapid industrialization uh, rapid urbanization uh, then the uh, forest depletion so so these are the imbalance of the nature cause the air pollution uh, due to the human activity as well as man uh, as well as the uh, natural phenomena so the first operation first operation in the industrial sector uh, or in the domestic in the uh, or the in the urban area there is a combustion so main cause of the air pollution is the combustion so any kind of elements organic substances or the fossil fuels are burnt into in the in the presence of air to form the various air pollutant so the fuel generally consists of the carbon hydrogen and some elements uh, so or the trace elements uh, and when this the, when this fossil fuel is burnt to produce the some gases such as the carbon monoxide carbon dioxide oxides of nitrogen and oxides of sulfur then unburnt uh, unreacted hydrocarbons unreacted gases Uh, some trace elements are in the form of the particulate matter some volatile organic compounds are also formed uh, due to the incineration or the combustion activity so the next pro operation is the reaction and the processes in chemical industries so many reactions and the processes are involved these liberates the different type of the fumes or a kind of gases or particulate matter in in uh, through the various activities so heating the third is the heating of the substance at a very high temperature so there are the some operations such as in the in the industries such as metallurgical industries where the uh, the operation is carried out at a very high temperature and the fumes of these metals or the some fumes of this at a very high temperature that we in the vapor form these are liberated into the atmosphere and causing the uh, addition of the uh, pollutant into the atmosphere so this as you know this as a industry in the chemical industry so solvent are being used these are volatile in nature uh, these whole hydrocarbon organic compounds are uh, are vaporized continuously from the storage facility and that will cause the liberation that could cause the emission of the that volatile organic compounds from the uh, from the industry there are the certain mechanical operations such as the crushing milling mining blending Uh, that also cause the uh, particulate matter to discharge into the atmosphere uh, then one of the major uh, uh, activity is the transportation from the to and from raw material to the packing or the final finished products so that will also uh, responsible for uh, adding the some pollutant uh, due to the automobile transport and there are certain natural phenomena such as volcanoes tornado forest fires biological decay decay etc which also liberate the <coughs> uh, hydro uh, liberate the different type of the pollutant into the atmosphere in such a concentration which will cause the air pollut uh, polluted so but air is having a tendency to disperse the nature has a tendency to disperse the the substance which are added into the atmosphere but the concentration Uh, of the emission is so high 
that that tends to accumulate more and more amount of the substance with the higher concentration and that's why this uh, this uh, thus this air are in in the surrounding premises or this particular location become polluted now we'll find out the air pollution sources so we will cut categorize the air pollution sources as a stationary sources as well as mobile sources a uh, first classification is the stationary or the mobile sources if you say the uh, if the pollu if the air pollutants are liberated from the particular source which is stationary such as industrial sector so we have the some major source industrial sectors such as chemical and the fertilizers industries refined petroleum refineries petrochemical uh, industries uh, some thermal power plants paper and pulp mills cement industry metallurgical industries and municipal incineration these are the major sources causing the uh, emission of the pollutant into the atmosphere so and their area sources some of the operations which are also carried out in the uh, in the urban area so that will cause the pollution so the if you come if you take the uh, consideration consider the mobile sources so automobile is the major source major source of as a mobile source uh, to liberate to emit the uh, gases as well as particulate matter into the atmosphere so automobiles railways airways some farming equipments recreational vehicles uh, they, they are causing uh, the they are acting as a mobile source and if you see if uh, classify the air pollution sources as a uh, depend upon whether they are natural or the anthropogenic anthropogenic means the man made activity as man made sources whereas the some the natural phenomena such as the volcanoes tornado or the some some kind of storm uh, forest fires these activities these this type of natural phenomena also live, also discharge the some uh, kind of the dust natural dust sea salt dispersion uh, then uh, smoke from the forest fires or agriculture burning so such a such a uh, such in such a way these are the different type of the sources then we'll first of we'll find out the types we'll study the types of air pollutant so based on the sources whether they are natural or the man made man made or anthropogenic sources so first of all natural sources some natural sources now due to the natural phenomena uh, some of sea salts pollen grains dust natural dust due to the disintegration of the uh, disintegration of the rocks and the soils uh, liberate the dust some carbon them some gases such as the carbon dioxide methane are produced are due to the anaerobic or the aerobic activities uh, into the uh, due to biological decay of the organic substances some natural fog may be produced and battery and the products of the volcanic eruption may cause may um, produce the uh, some kind of uh, gaseous emissions into the atmosphere some anthropogenic there are so many anthropogenic activity or the man made activity which are responsible for producing the air pollutant so basically whether they are natural or the anthropogenic pollutant they are further classified broadly classified as a primary pollutant as uh, and the secondary pollutant the primary pollutant are those which are directly emitted from the from the source such as a point source area source or the line source uh, the examples of these are the carbon monoxide uh, carbon dioxide nitrogen oxides sulfur ox sulfur dioxide some trace elements in or in the form of particulate matter uh, and the gas vapor form like volatile organic compounds and hydrocarbons uh, some natural products such as the sea salts pollen methane uh, carbon dioxide uh, are produced and or the products of the volcanic eruption are nothing but the primary pollutant when these primary pollutant are added into the atmosphere they take part into the uh, into the second uh, with the in the secondary reaction uh, photochemically or and catalytically in the presence of sunlight to form the secondary pollutant the secondary pollutant are the product pollutant formed from the primary pollutant in the atmosphere uh, through the reaction photochemical uh, photocatalytic reactions so the example of the secondary pollutant are these nothing but the ozone hydrogen peroxide sulfur trioxide sulfurous acid acid formation react to aerosols um, uh, then the salts of the acid such as the sulfates and the nitrate salts then the secondary pollutant major pollutant like peroxy acid acetyl nitrate that is pan or 
uh, or particulate polycyclic organic matter that is PPOM are also produced as a secondary pollutant uh, after the reactions of the primary pollutant. Then classify the up air pollutant basically into two broad categories that is particulate matter whether they are suspended or called as a suspended particulate matter, particulate matter or respiratory suspended particulate matter. They remain in the atmosphere for long time. And the second category is the gases and the vapors. So if you take the consideration of the particulate matter, uh, they are very a fine size, uh, the ranging from uh, sub microscopic level to certain 200 to 300 microns. So this particulate matter may be inert in nature or they are highly reactive depending upon their chemical composition and the chemical composition of this particulate matter depends upon their source of origin. So if you classify the different type of the particulate matter, the first category is the dust. So the dust is produced due to the natural disintegration uh, of these rocks and the soils. Their size is ranging from 1 micrometer to 200 micrometer and they are having the substantial uh, settling velocity. So they do get deposited on the earth surface. The second category is the smoke. A smoke is a uh, nothing but the solid or the liquid particles that form a haze. Uh, having the range of point on the size of the particle having the range of point not one micro to one microns and particularly they are they they uh, they are having the different uh, colors uh, the smokes are having the colors depend upon the uh, depend upon the com its composition then third category is the fumes generally fumes is uh, solid particles they are ranging from 0.1 to 1 microns they are released from the chemical uh, chemical uh, industries as well as metallurgical industries uh, they are nothing but the um, in the vapor in the vapor form the solids at a high temperature this heating processes liberate these fumes this smoke is a term which is a combination of the smoke plus fog is an abnormal behavior it may be because of the excessive fog formation because of the moist or the mist uh, having this particle size a droplet size smaller than 10 microns um, that is water vapors uh, when combined with the, some primary and the secondary pollutant in the form of smoke when they combine and the stagnant condition will cause the uh, photochemical smog behavior. Then fourth category, uh, the fifth category is the aerosols. They are very some small si in size. They are uh, smaller than one micron. They are some microscopic airborne suspension whether they are either they are solid or the liquid. The particulate matter in the size range between 1 to 10 microns having the miserable settling velocity but readily stirred by an air movement whereas the 0.1 to 1 microns are relatively smaller and having smaller settling velocity and the submicroscopic particle undergo the Brownian motion. So finest and the smallest particulate matter this cause the significant damage to the human health. When this particulate matter of various sites get deposited on the vegetation they also damage the vegetation damage the photosynthesis there affects the photosynthesis of the vegetation that's why they are highly dangerous these pollutants particulate matter are also dangerous so chemical composition of the particular matter varies over a wide range depend upon their source of origin so based on the source of origin the particulate matter in the following forms the particle the particulate matter may be in the uh, in the form of soils or the minerals they are primary contains calcium al uh, aluminium silicon uh, elements in the uh, in, in its constituents as a constituents so particulate matter of organic compounds uh, in the form of smoke produced from the combustion activity or some insecticide dust produced from the uh, by insecticide spraying in the agriculture activity or the fumes are released from the chemical and in chemical industries they are having particularly in the composition of the organic compounds then the Third category is the hydrocarbons themselves combines with the aerosols. Uh, they are actually themselves are not harmful to the human health directly, but they combine with the, some aerosol droplet to form a reactive aerosol uh, that is one kind of particulate matter. Then trace elements such as cadmium, lead, mercury, nickel, etc. are also produced due to the different uh, industrial activity, uh, and these are re at uh, in the fine size, fine micron size are liberated into the atmosphere. The most harmful component of incomplete combustion is grouped as, as a particulate polycyclic organic matter. 
in the second category is the gases and vapors the gases of sulfur compounds the major